Welcome one, welcome all to your wonderful show here on Sankofa. Sankofa looking backwards at the future. And the bird that is looking into the ancient times, trying to focus its eyes on where it is coming from, so that we can map up where we are going. And for today, we are excited. we got young people in the house celebrating the role of women in the greater liberation of the African continent as a whole. And many of you out there, you may think that art is just another form of uh, making money it has become entertainment but if from the ancient wars of the past people would chant in the battle fronts in an african spaces right now on funerals people sing to comfort themselves when people are plowing in their fields people are singing when they are beating their corn people are singing when women are busy pounding their corn in, in front you hear if you are sitting in the background you hear that rhythm and that music the heartbeat of africa that keeps the continent breathing as it is therefore art to us is not just entertainment art is actually a form of life spiritual connection and if you are looking at the traditional african kudu horn you know that kind of a sound in an African village is announcing that there is a traditional uh, ceremony that is happening. We've brewed some nice uh, traditional uh, and, uh, uh, devil's waters uh, that we must be enjoying. There is a function. There is a celebration in the village. And uh, music has always been part of the African people. And if we are looking at Sankofa, would have failed. Just look at the philosophies, the economies, the various hegemonies and epistemologies of the past, and we miss the critical part of our expression, our dressing, our music, our dance, our drums, and our, our, our expressions as Africans, as our sweat and dust meet together and creating some ambience in the mountains and the caves nearby. You know, the African village is alive. When in the night, in the songs of the crickets, you still hear the sound of a drum at a distance. Something is happening. That's what Africa is all about. That's what Africa is. And today, we just want to celebrate the role of women in this entire space and uh, see how they have actually contributed towards the greater civilization. It's a shame, of course, that women help to bring up independence, but immediately these independence are in place. It becomes a male party all male testosterone running the governments and etc but our women have always been valuable and today i want to celebrate them don't go away let's just listen to one of some of these beautiful beautiful voices on the african continent the group is called sweet symphony and uh, let me also say this is where nepotism becomes nice you know nepotism and uh, yeah because these are my kids these are my kids i i i brought them up yes they are mine i can claim them as mine they are celebrating a song by our hero, Le Tambuli, uh, who did a song, Not Yet Uhuru. Not Yet Uhuru is a complicated song. It, it says we're independent, but we're not yet independent. We are, we are in power, but we're not in control. Not Yet Uhuru means that the liberation that we sang for, the, the independence that we sang for, the Africa that we celebrated, still has not yet arrived. And the question is, where is Uhuru? Where is Uhuru? And these kids have also celebrated this song in a modern song, Not Yet Uhuru. Listen to these beautiful voices from my children. Sweet Symphony. I'll be back right after the break.
Right here in South Africa on your Galaxy Investor Network channel where we're having a program for you, Sankofa. And uh, my old my old friend, Baba Sipongobo, no mama u umangobo, and your grandmother, my lovely, wonderful old mama, Mehesol, rest in please, Mamu Kuzwayo. And how old were you when I first saw you? That 1980. Four, eight, five. Born yet. We're not born yet. <laughs> then I it was born. only your mother. Yeah, so you were that yes. small little baby that was still. All right, all right. Then this is the daughter of my my beautiful friend and comrade in the battle, Babu Sipo Ngobo. And uh, I will call him Mangobo. That's what you do in Africa here. Yes. And you carry that the rest of your life. Yes, true. Never Introduce yourself. Who are you? My first name is Lindile. So my parents, um, being their firstborn, they were very excited. And they came up with three names. Lindile, Nomkosi, Nogbonga. So Lindile, we have awaited. Nomkosi with celebration. Nogbonga with Thanksgiving. Okay. So yes, that's who I am. I'm also named after my grandmother, Umakuzwayo. This is Katebe. The one that you know very well. Okay. Um, yes, I'm sure I'm an African child born in Durban. Uh -huh. I've lived majority of my life in Johannesburg. But whenever people ask me, I still say I'm from Durban. Eh, Natal. Eh, Natal. Home is home. Home yeah. is home. So, yeah, just that's who I am, I guess. Where, with my give us a little bit more. Where have you been? What have you been doing? Okay. I know you went to Germany. You uh, you almost disappeared to Botswana, but that's the story for now. Wow, disappeared. Let, 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 let's hear all the nitty gritties. Uh. Okay, so... um. Grew up in Durban, moved up to Johannesburg when I was about 13 years old. Um, so my teenage years into the rest of my adolescence and young adulthood has been in Joburg. Um, studied become accounting. So I studied accounting, went on to do honors in internal audit, and then I've worked as an internal auditor in risk management space as well, which is where I am right now. Um, the part that you're speaking about is when I had the opportunity um, to travel abroad and I lived there for two years. So I auditioned in, in Johannesburg for um, The Lion King, okay. specifically, yes. So the producers from that show came through to South Africa and they do it every year, knowing that South Africa has a pool of talented mm. uh, musicians, singers, mm. dancers, and everything. So they came through, I went through for an audition. It was a three-stage audition of just voice, learning lines, basic choreography, which I was so afraid of. Oh, you must, you must do all <laughs> yes, exactly, for and the, the show. And the European. If they had asked you to do the Zulu thing, maybe... I would, would, maybe you, then you I would have been stronger. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I went through that, and about six months later, I got a call that I was successful, mm -hmm. and I was placed in the Netherlands specifically. Okay. So I did visit Germany, but I was based in the Netherlands for two years. Yeah, yes. Utrecht. I was there for some time. Also. Utrecht, okay. I was based in The Hague. Okay. So Den Haag. The Hague? Yes, The, the Hague. Famous Hague. The famous Hague. Ooh, yes. I've been to the criminal day. courts and all of that. Uh -huh. um, but yes, so that was two years of my life um, full time as a musician. Mm -hmm. And that's always something that I've wanted to do. Um, you'll know that as parents, parents always want the best for their kids. Mm -hmm. And when choosing um, my career, mm -hmm. My parents always supported the love of music, but they didn't want me to do it full time. Mm. And they had their reasons for it. I mean, mm. in South Africa, where there is so much talent, the competition is high. It's deep. You know, you know. Yeah, so um, th what they always supported was I continue with my music um, on the side. Have a career. Yes, have a career solid. that I can fall back on. Um, so when I made that decision to 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 go through and and work full time as a musician, it was a great experience. Okay. Um, yeah. In summary, highlights is so great you guys experience. So the whole family sings, I hear. The whole family sings. Um, if you ask my parents who's the better singer, my dad will always say it's him. Ah. <laughs> he will always say it's him. He's a first tenor. My mom is a soprano. Okay. Um, I sing with my sisters as well. Uh, so we've had our family trio, Nobo, Nobo mm. Girls Trio. You can look for us. Yeah, You'll yeah, find yeah, us yeah. on YouTube or wherever yeah. it is. Well, we've always to sang. an album as a family. You know? yes. just, just one. It'll no, be, that's true. Just, even, even if you are scared of the market just for... Just for keepsake for, for, for that. For, you know, mm. while you are all are still there, you know, something yes. to... But as you are looking at Africa, our program is Sankofa, okay. and we're having a conversation around the liberation of the African child in, in all aspects. Mm. So I will not push it the deep end, but uh, okay. we'll play on the shallow waters. But I really want to pick up from you as a young person, when you are looking at the African continent and the challenges that we're facing for in, in throughout Africa, mm. what do you see happening and how and what do you see, what do you want to see happening vis-a-vis -vis what is happening? So you touched on how Sweet Symphony just did a song, um, Not Yet Uhuru. We did a cover of Mamle Dambulu's song. And it's a beautiful song, like you said. It's, it's beautiful not only because of its rhythm, because of the words of it, but what made it um, even more beautiful, even painfully beautiful, was the fact that it's still relevant today. Mm. When we say Not Yet Uhuru as young people, we're not free. And 
the question is, what does freedom look like to us? Mm. And that's the question that keeps on running through us, um, through our minds as we listen to the song. Yes, we can vote, but what does that vote actually mean? Mm. If we're looking at a almost 40% unemployment rate, mm. 30% unemployment rate, what does that mean for, for the South African, mm. specifically where we are? But if you look even further up into the rest of Africa, we've seen how we've been looted as a continent. Mm. And very often we do get some sort of acknowledgement and an apology mm. to say, you know, the past shouldn't have happened. Mm. But what was taken from us has never been returned. Um, and that's, that's the painful reality of the African child, is that we're fighting to catch up. And the truth of the matter is that we shouldn't need to fight. You know, we shouldn't be fighting for what is ours already. You know, so when I, when I hear Noche to Huru, it, it makes sense to me. I think of my days when I was in the Netherlands, and I'd hear the comments when I'm walking or I'm in a restaurant. Um, a restaurant that's accessible to everyone, right? I have, I have euros as much as you have euros. But the commentary would be, what is she doing here? You know, in Dutch, obviously, what is she doing here? I order something, they have a look at what I'm ordering. Almost a fascination to say, oh, she's comfortable enough to be in our space, you know? And um, it's, it's strange how it's still happening today, which wow. is why we're still asking the question, are we free? What do we need in order to be free? Mm -hmm. um, for me, my freedom, and I, I cannot downplay the, the, the strides that have been made and the progress that has been made. I cannot downplay that. But my question is, how long will we be fighting mm. for equal rights? Mm. You know, equal meaning what you have, I'd like to have. Mm. And the question is, when we say that, the, the response is always no. Mm. How can you say no? Okay. Interesting. Interesting enough. Let's, let me punch a bit of a hole on your artistic side. In your own world, how do you think arts, music and culture contributes towards the greater leadership because i know in independence is a political thing mm. but when it comes to really now being free in a cultural space in a in a in a, in a, in a dietary space those are individual choices yes. the government cannot come to your house and reinstate to you that you are a zulu True. start behaving like a zulu True. so maybe some some of us confuse mm. independence with national legislation that now what you are doing in your house must be legislated. At the end of the day, you find people who say they are independent, but they're still stuck or entrenched purely in a colonial system with no one supervising them. Mm. How do you see art actually as a form of expressing yourself away from the chains of colonialism? So art gives us a voice. Um, art allows you to step into rooms that possibly would have never been allowed into. Um, if you had just come in and said, I'm Lindy, I have something to share with you, they might have never opened the door for you. Mm. However, when I sing, for some reason, you lower your guard because the truth of the matter is music speaks to the heart mm. and it speaks to the soul. So you'll find that over the years, um, musicians have used their voice not only for entertainment, mm. but for the fact that um, if you look at your Miriam Makebas, if you look at um, Huma Segelas, people that went into exile and not only just went there mm. to, to find a safe space or to perform, but use their voice to bring attention mm. to what was going on in Africa. Mm. Um, art gives us a voice. Art opens doors that would have typically never been opened. Mm. Um, when I think about how I, I left the country at someone else's expense because God gifted me with a voice and I was able to use that. Mm. In that space, I'm then open to, um, I'm then allowing myself to, to speak to others about what's going on in my space, mm. you know, give them a view of what's happening in Africa. Because sometimes what happens is people have a perception and an understanding that is very far from reality, mm. right? And um, as you said, the streets might not allow you to be to walk up with to walk with your head held high, so to speak. But in your home, when your parents have given you that that confidence and that boost and that um, affirmation to say you're proudly Zulu, you're proudly black. It's not a mistake that your skin is this color. It's not a mistake that your hair is coily. Mm -hmm. When I walk into those spaces, even if people are staring at me, I couldn't care less. And in fact, when they do stare, I'm thinking, okay, they noticed my hair is beautiful. Mm -hmm. You know, um, so it starts at the home. It starts in the home and. The, the truth of the matter is when we see society um, getting to a point where it's, it's, it's painful to step outside, getting to a point where our hearts are broken because of what's happening to people around us, it's because something has gone wrong at home. Mm. So when we get that foundation right at home, we see it out in the streets as well. Fantastic. You, you, you come from a Zulu background. Yes. So I'll, I'll just maybe pinch you a little bit on the <laughs> cultural side. Okay. No, I won't hurt you. <laughs> in, uh, what is the name of a, a, a woman in Zulu? Nkoskas. Nkoskas. Yes. The name of a son? Ndotan. Ndotan. Let's go to Nkoskas. Mm -hmm. What does the word Nkoskas mean? Yo. <laughs> oh, oh, wow. Break it apart and use, apply your mind. If you think about it, what is Nkos? 
Nkosi is a king. Nkosi is a king. Yes. All right. Yes. So what you see even with um with animals or even with um kings and queens in love in love guys, mm -hmm. right? And what you get is the name of the man, so to speak, mm -hmm. and being put higher for the woman. So Nkosi, mm Nkosi -hmm. mm -hmm. That's so I, I don't know how else to explain it. Okay. You know when you know the meaning but trying to articulate it. So in it. African I'm 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 heading somewhere. Okay. Because in terms of African mindset therefore, mm -hmm. particularly in a Zulu setting. Mm -hmm. When we are looking at our women, mm. they are actually the makers of kings. Yes. In course, the cars. Yes. So in other words, in course, is a lot cars. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The king comes from a queen. Yeah. You know that kind true. of thing. Mm. And uh, in the midst, in the midst of you growing up, maybe just before we go for the quick short break, mm. in the midst of you growing up now, you now you're an artist, you are a professional person, you're a musician, you are you're an auditor, mm. you are all this, this, this. If you had a word for the young people out there look into the South African space and the greater African continent. You have audience right from here to Nigeria to Ghana and beyond who are listening to you. As a, mm. and, and by the way, you guys who are at home there, if you intend to visit my daughter, I need my cows. I don't need cash. I need my cows on wow. their hooves. <laughs> the day you finish paying Lobola, the house must be full of cow dung. Then I know <laughs> that uh, my daughter has left the house. Mm. In your own world, sending a message to the greater young people out there as to what, what, what do you think would be the most important thing that you want the young people to do, to think, to feel, to anticipate, to get involved in, you know, just mm. give, give us a word for the young people. It's, it's actually a quite a difficult question because there's so much that I believe we need to know. But the one thing that I think is consistent and is paramount is that you need to know that you're worthy. Um, you don't need to be apologetic for anything. Mm -hmm. Every space that you're talk in, them, every them. space that you're in, you belong there. You belong. There's nothing inferior about you. And as you step into the world, know in full confidence that you're worthy. There's no mistake in terms of the, the color of your skin, the color of your eyes, the, the texture of your hair. None of that is a mistake. So own that. That's what I'd like for every African child to know. Own your space. Own who you are. Be comfortable in your skin because you matter and you're worthy. Wow. That's from Mangobo right here on your program, Sankofa where we're exploring a bit of the, how the young people in our modern days are looking back to see some experiences from the old artists and projecting their voices into the future, creating the Africa that we want to see. And I saw a statement the other day that said, old people start planning the future for the young people. Stop, because you won't be there in the future. Now the young people are here today to speak for themselves. If I, was, if I had all the power in my hands, mm. I would actually take all those retired people in the government and send them to their villages okay. because they are busy planning for the future mm. and they won't we'll be there, be there. <laughs> and the people who will be there in the future instead of you having half of the parliament mm. with young people and then the old people are not there to to shout they are there to hand over the skills the budgets mm. hand over so that at least there's a smooth transition there's always in africa the crisis of leadership because the old people hold on to the power thing until they can't even breathe and boo next thing they die and young people start fighting. I'm sitting with Mangovo talking a little bit and picking the brains of the young people for the future. We'll be back right out of the break. Don't go away. <laughs>
Experience the extraordinary. Feeling is there that you know you're doing something special. Have you lost it? Move. Stop being so dramatic, Mira. Challenge your ordinary. Why don't you start a dance class? Experience the extraordinary with Star Set. Challenge your ordinary. Experience the extraordinary. Not only the government, the municipality here has had no plan. Now I believe that my peace is my most valuable asset. Absolutely beautiful. This is exactly what I was looking for. Camping, camping, camping. DJ Khaled. It is a day to celebrate. We're ready for action. I like it when it's nice and soft. Yeah, that is yeah. nice. How was it like growing up in Nigeria? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You know what it is. Feeling is there that you know you're doing something special. Stop being so dramatic, Mira. You should just be what you want to be. Experience the extraordinary with Star Set. Thank you very much for giving us space into your living rooms where we are uh, enjoying ourselves on this beautiful, beautiful winter Sunday. Wherever you are in Abuja, wherever you are in Accra, Ghana, in Tanzania, Dar es Salaam, or you're in Brazzaville, Congo, or Lusaka, or Harare, or Mozambique, Lorenzo Max. We're happy to have you with us on this beautiful, wonderful program on Sankofa. And uh, I've, I've brought three beautiful, four actually, four beautiful young people that I would want to introduce to you. The next guest we have is Annele Ngobo. Before I say much about, much about her, talk to her, maybe she can actually introduce uh, herself with one of her works that she has done. And I hear she's a, she's a, no, let me not, let me not, let me not get, get the cat out of the bag. Introduce us to yourself. My name is Anele, and I'm going to share a poem entitled Suicide Note. Suicide Note. Read it or don't read it. It won't change the fact that I'm gone. Yes, the suicide note might bring you some harm, but you need to understand what has been going on. I've taken my own life. I've taken my own life because I was tired, fired, not fired up for anything. I was let go and told to serve my notice, pack up and leave. So I'll leave it at that. Wow. <laughs> suicide note. Yeah. My word. Suicide note. What do you do? What, how do you come up with this uh, beautiful poem like this? So suicide note was written at a time where I was busy with my law degree. Mm -hmm. Um, it You're wasn't. A so I'm still studying to become a lawyer. Okay. How many yes. years to go? One year. One year to go. Literally one module left. One module left. Yes. So it was at a time where things were tough, mm. challenging. I felt like um, I'm not going to get through this law degree. And I just felt the pressure of, you know, that's when snapping I'm, point. Exactly. That's yeah. snapping point you know, the graduation pressure and stuff. So mm -hmm. I wrote Suicide Note in attempting to clear my mind so that I don't feel the pressure as mm -hmm. much, mm -hmm. but rather write down my thoughts so that I can pick myself up and continue. Wow. So what do you do? What do you do? Are you, you are a multi, uh, you know, skilled person with various skills in various spaces. Just give, give, introduce us to Anele. Anele does this. Anele does this. Anele does this. And if you forget, I'll remind the audience of other things. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so I'd like to think of myself as a performer. I perform oh. spoken word, which is poetry. Mm -hmm. I sing with my sisters as well as a gospel group, Sweet Symphony. Mm -hmm. um, are, you that, are you that soprano voice that goes up? Well, I sing um, alto in you Sweet Symphony, alto. yes. And the, I do soprano. So my sister is a soprano. She's the one who does that, uh, you know, on uh, I'm Dreaming of a City, that, yeah, 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 <laughs> that goes up there. Yeah, she's a soprano of All the right. group. And then my other sister leads the song. Okay. Yeah. Um, so I've um, also been in choirs, a university choir, so I performed, um, we've done international tours, I performed in Beijing, um, in Stellenbosch as well when we did our local tour. So 
yeah, choir, okay. poetry. Okay, music we've heard. Let's move music. on. What else do you do? What else do you do? So right now I've um I'm busy with my startup business. Mm -hmm. It's a confectionery business. So what is confectionery now in simple English? <laughs> confectionery is basically um decorating cakes, cupcakes. Okay. So like, uh, it's baking. All right. Yes. All right. Oh, it's, it's baking. Yes. But there's another word they use for it. What is it? Um, Culinary. Yeah, culinary. culinary. Yes. You see, I'm not so, so culinary. Yes, it's I'm like not so, I'm not so <laughs> arcade, you know. Yeah, food yeah. work. Mm. Okay, so you make some cakes. We'll order some cakes from you then. Please do. Y yes. Please and what else bake. do you do? What else do you do? And um, so right now, I'm currently au pairing because I'm passionate about early childhood development. Wow. So I have my little student oh, okay. who. Au pairing. I thought you were saying au operations now. <laughs> no, au pair. Au pair. Au pair. What is yes. au pair, madam? So au pairing, basically, I have my student, mm. a young child, mm. who I tutor and basically take care of. Mm. So I make sure that, you know, um, they're upskilled with um, their schoolwork, mm. make sure that um, I push them to be the best with their schoolwork, mm. as well as other extracurricular activities. Wow. Yes. Wow. Anything else? Well, tell us about yourself. What else do you do? So, I feel like I've said a mouthful. No, you're dancing not, you're as well. I'm not, go, not going to the other side. I know you. So, yeah. So, dancing is also another passion of mine. Mm. I did ballet when I was really young. Mm. And after that, I also went into contemporary dance in high school. And now on my Instagram page, I just do all types of just genres. All, yeah. All sorts of, things, all sorts of moves. Yes. You show us all sorts of moves. <laughs> all sorts now, of what, moves. What I want us to maybe to, to zoom in, into that a little bit. <clears throat> I'm looking at a young woman here who's got about four to five, to, if not six, areas of, of great potential. I'm looking at your artistic side, your, your dancing side, for example. I'm looking at your musical side. I'm looking at your making cakes issues. I'm looking at your au pair stories. I'm looking at your professional, your law, your law degree story, and maybe other things. And here we are with a woman, young woman who actually has more than five areas of interest. And we have young people out there who are actually talking of non-employment. I want us maybe to look at how do you think young people must harness their energies and convert their passion, convert their energies into business models. How do you think they should do that? Because I, I, as I'm looking at you now and I'm hearing you talking, it's almost like I can take bits and pieces of what you are doing and give them to other children who are sitting at home right now polishing their nails because they have nothing to do, they have no work, they have no one who can employ them. Whereas you are the industry in yourself. I'm wondering, how did you get it right? And so many young people out there can't just get it right. They just can't get their butts off the chairs because someone must give them a job. So I think young people know what I'm talking about. There's a series called Insecure. And the actress on there, Issa Rae, she speaks about at some point in her life, her mother was telling her that she has her hand in too many things. You know, she had a degree, she was trying to act, she was trying to do stand-up comedy, a number of things. And I believe that once you have the balance in your life, that's how you'll be able to excel in things and not just focus on one thing because you'll find that that thing is maybe too draining for you. Mm -hmm. So for me, when I was focusing on just my law degree, I felt like it was a okay. bit too draining. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I had to balance it out. Okay, fine. I'm here at university. I'm studying law, but I can join the university choir mm -hmm. and, you know, extramural activities. Yes, extramural activities. And how beautiful and extramural activities start paying bills. I mean, you are in Beijing. You come up with a bit of some cash. Here you are instilling with some bit of cash. Here you are dancing, yeah. some bit of cash. Here you are doing operating, some bit of cash. Here you are. There's a guy who wrote a book, actually, that I want to recommend, Ruben Onubiko. He's a Nigerian guy. He wrote a book entitled Seven Streams of Income. And in that book, he expands on the idea that it is illegal for, for an African to have one source of income. Because as an African, you had your cattle, one income. You had your goats, another income. You do your sheep, another income. You do your chickens, another income. You do agriculture, another and even in agriculture, you had various types of crops and etc. Your arts. So when you look at an African village, you look at an African home, you don't find them only waiting on one sort of an income. Ubabo, you had to open. Your father has gone to work in Johannesburg. You bring us income. But you already have a base. And, and I think I like what I see. And if there are young people out there who are listening to this brilliant mind, it's my daughter, of course, brilliant mind. 
Diversify, diversify, diversify. Plural your forms of income. While you're studying, get involved in extramural activities, get involved in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in other extensions of your skills and create a wealth of experience which actually becomes profitable in the long end. Can I shoot the last one? If I should give South Africa to you as a country right now and you are the president of the country, what would you do? What would I do? As the president of the country, um, I believe that, okay, the South Africa that I would like to see mm. definitely is each child, each race um, experiencing equality. Mm. Basically, we need to get rid of the isms, mm -hmm. for example, racism, mm. sexism. We need to give every, everybody an equal voice. Mm -hmm. So as the president of South Africa, I would focus on giving everybody an equal voice. An equal voice. All right, you're being vegetarian with words, yeah? <laughs> an equal voice for everyone. And for the greater African continent, a word to the viewers out there, you have lots of young people that are watching you right now around the world. If you would leave them with one good statement, what would that be? For the greater Africa, I'd like to say, don't limit yourself. The, it's cliche to say, but the world is your oyster. You can oh. place yourself in any space and trust me, you fit there. You can be yourself no matter what. Stay true to yourself is really important. It was a nice little 20 second solo. Let me just sample your voice a bit. <laughs> I'll maybe sing Nache Tuhuru. Just as my line, let me hear. Slava wagi tibo, slava wagi tibo, o seminda o, o seminda o, agu kome sugo guleli zwe, kaula makamandela, kaula makamandela. Wow, you guys, you heard it for yourself, man. That voice. If I, if you have a wife like this, and there are problems in the house, you just say sing. Sing, please. Just sing. And don't talk to such people who can sing beautifully like this and you mess up the house with too much words with our guest today, Annele, uh, with the group Sweet Symphony on your program, Sankofa, exploring the voices of the young people, speaking to the past, singing into the future with the Africa, the South Africa, the greater continent that they want to create for themselves. And I think one thing I've learned today, teach your children to diversify. Diversify multiply your streams of income don't get stuck doing one thing and your song when you are your poem while you're saying uh, my suicide not i was actually listening to it from an african perspective and i was saying how is africa committing suicide we'll be back right after the break to be exploring more of these young african voices don't go away From rural to urban, we bring you local and international sport. From Cape to Cairo, from Nairobi to Kinshasa. <laughs> We stand out amongst the rest. And we are here to inspire you. From the Horn of Africa to the Equator's indigenous people. Channel 500 on Starset. This is Galaxy Universal Network. The coronavirus outbreak. Experience the extraordinary. Tremendous waste and tremendous fraud. Mexico is, in fact, you will soon find out. It is a day to celebrate. We don't approve at all what's going on. Well, I don't know if it's necessarily unusual. Challenge your ordinary. Not only the government, the municipality here has had no plan. Experience the extraordinary with Starset.
Welcome back again to your program, Sankofa. My name is Maponga J. Vudzijana. And uh, here we are having a conversation today with beautiful ladies. And because I had received some messages, I want to buy a pop. You know, people like flying. Some are already telling me, hey, how come you only have men on your program? Hey, just, just imagine I interviewed two men and I'm already stereotyped as a male chauvinist. Now today I'm up, I have three women. I hope you can write back your comment and say, now you're happy the program is balanced. I have three beautiful girls. Actually, there are five in all. The other two could not make it to the studio. They sing beautifully. And please don't go away. We are going to give you some of the small little bits and bits and pieces of their music and sample up some of the songs that they have done. And uh, we are happy again to be having with us Umbali and Mota. Introduce yourself to the world and uh, tell us who is Mbali Mota. All right. Hi, world. Um, my name is Mbali Mota and I hail from Soweto. Um, yeah, the famous Soweto. Uh -huh. And I am... A musician. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm a musician, aspiring musician. Mm. I sing, I write. Okay. Um, now I'm teaching myself how to play the, the piano. piano. Okay. It's my favorite instrument. Favorite instrument. Yeah. Wow, Mbali Mota. Let's reflect on the song that you did with uh, the cover song for Umamule Tambuli on Not Yet Uhuru. Can I ask you a question? Yes, sir. Where is Uhuru? Mm. Mm -hmm. That's a good question. Um, I myself, I do not know. And I do not know when are we going to find Uhuru eventually. Mm. Like, um, like I'm longing for that day. You know, um, our forefathers have fought, but still, you know, we are still fighting. Mm. Um, hopefully, the generation after us will not be fighting. Mm. But we will fight. We will give it our all. What do you think causes the disjoint? Sorry, I might be gliding away now into my space. Right. What, gives, what do you think gives the disjoint? What causes the, the mismatch between African independence and African people? Where, where do you think the governments or the churches or the society is missing it? Because it looks like what is in front is different from what is at the back. It, it, as a young person, yeah. apply your mind and say, maybe, maybe when... Maybe, they are or we are missing it here where, where, what place is that which causes the disjoint between african independence and and african real true freedom um i think the biggest um cause of the disjoint would be um unity there's no unity and harmony amongst us That's you know? yeah we don't want to see each other succeed you mm. know um i want to succeed alone you want to succeed alone and you know you want to be praised and worshipped by everyone else but you don't want to lift the next person so that we are all successful mm -hmm. and we are all powerful mm. so maybe ubuntu next. ubuntu maybe ubuntu and finding each other yes working together with each other yes sir. and etc mm -hmm. wow in your own world who are your top three african women whom you can look at and give us maybe a sentence or two behind each one of them um those that have influenced you, maybe could be in the arts world, could be in a political space. But if you are looking into the space of the greater Africans, even beyond, can you name for me three beautiful role models, women in your life that you can say, man, if I would wake up in the morning and I am like that one, I think, mommy, you can send yourself and say, mommy, I made it. All right. Yeah. <laughs> I think the first one would be um, Mam Winnie, Tikizela Mandela. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a fighter, that one. Um, what is in here? I know she's from Soweto, so he can into a near Soweto. Hey, she had no fear. Uh -huh. That's what I liked about her. Mm -hmm. She had no fear. And if a lot of us would take out that spirit of fear, because God has not given us the spirit of fear, mm -hmm. and um, just use what God has given us, um, the world would be a better place. So Mamuini. she. Mamuini. Mamuini. Yes. And then, of course, Mamire Makeba. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes I call myself Young Miriam Makeba. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's a good brand, by the way. It's a good brand. If yes, you take it seriously, sure. don't joke with don't joke with greatness. Yes, sir. Don't joke with greatness. Sure. Yeah. Yes, there are people. Um, Fab Music, Little Richard, for example. You know, they took yeah. a name of a professional and branded and made it bigger. So yeah. if you, if you want to brand yourself, take yourself seriously. I need to consider that. Yes. yes sir. So yeah, she's also one of the women that. 
you know, um, have inspired me. Mm -hmm. um, of course, musically, mm -hmm. she's she was amazing. She was amazing. She was amazing. Yeah. Like we all know that. Uh, I mean, who, uh, who can say as a musician if not done part apart? Exactly, exactly. She was really amazing. Yeah. Um, and then the last one would be okay. Uh, I'm gonna go for a young one. Nomza mm. uh, Mbata. Mm -hmm. Yeah, hey, that girl is doing the most. Who is Nomzamna? <laughs> uh, one of our famous South African actresses. Okay. And yeah. Okay. Yeah, she's in the arts world. Wow. And she has made it. Now she's like living overseas. Mm -hmm. You know, she, she has made a name for herself. Okay. And she has worked so hard. Um, yeah, I, I mean. Talk to the young people in the world there. Give them some instructions, some advice from a fellow African. You are a South African voice who is speaking to other South African, other African al -Kebalam children around the continent. If you should be talking to um, some of your friends right across the plains of Africa, what is it that you want to tell them about this great continent called Africa? What they must they be doing to build the Africa that you want to see as a young person? Uh, listen, my friends, uh, we are Africans. We are great. Um, God created us. We were made in God's image. And come on, like there's, there's a lot of wealth in us, you know. Um, so we need to, um, what can I say? Just do you. Do you. Be you. And make the world a better place, really. Wow. I like that. <laughs> there you are from the mouths of the young children. And I hope you guys as young people, you can hear each other when they say do you. In me as an old man, for example, I don't, I don't, I don't understand that part of do you, you know. But, but as young people, when you're talking like that, I think you can hear each other very well. Uh, do yourself a favor, develop yourself. And I hear from the three ladies that have spoken to us so far, it's all about be proud of yourself. You know, identify the resources that are in you. Multiply your streams of income. Identify your voice again. And do what is right and build a continent. Build a continent and don't just stand back and wait for the old people to bring the future to you. Go out there, get involved, get yourself educated, read, write and run, do arts, do anything. Go back to your grandfather's farm, convert those farms into profitable estates. Learn from the old people how to do all these small little things of art and what. Because if they die and they go with these skills... We'll be stranded again in another generation that doesn't even know what happened, does not know what happened in the past. So please plug into the old roots, get as much from the roots, plug yourself into a big tree, you can begin to yield some fruits from there. But I'm excited to be talking to young people. Any final words? Any final words for your viewers out there? Um, firstly, I'm so happy to be here. Um, can I please? No, a hug, actually. <laughs> I'm, in, I'm, in, I'm in wires, I'm in wires, I'm in wires. I mean, why wow. Thank you very much. It was an honor. It was an honor to have him with us here, Osis Umbali. And uh, we'll be back right after the break. Challenge your ordinary. Experience the extraordinary. Not only the government, the municipality here has had no plan. Now, I believe that my peace is my most valuable asset. Absolutely beautiful! This is 
is exactly what I was looking for. Epic, epic, epic. DJ Khaled. It is a day to celebrate. We're ready for action. I like it when it's nice and soft. Yeah, that yeah. is nice. How was it like growing up in Nigeria? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You know what it is. Feeling is there that, you know, you're doing something special. Stop being so dramatic, Mira. You should just be what you want to be. Experience the extraordinary with Starset. The coronavirus outbreak. Experience the extraordinary. Tremendous waste and tremendous fraud. Mexico is, in fact, you will soon find out. It is a day to celebrate. We don't approve at all what's going on. Well, I don't know if it's necessarily unusual. Challenge your ordinary. Not only the government, the municipality here has had no plan. Experience the extraordinary with Starset. Experience the extraordinary. Feeling is there that you know you're doing something special. Have you lost it? Move. <laughs> Stop being so dramatic, Mira. Challenge your ordinary. Why don't you start a dance class? <laughs> Experience the extraordinary with Starset. From rural to urban, we bring you local and international sport. From Cape to Cairo, from Nairobi to Kinshasa. <laughs> We stand out amongst the rest. And we are here to inspire you. From the Horn of Africa to the Equator's indigenous people. Channel 500 on Starset. This is Galaxy Universal Network. Well, welcome back to your show here on Sankofa with your host Maponga J. Uh, on your great African uh, Sunday afternoon here, what is we're cooling off and while we're breathing, uh, having conversations around the greater African continent. And uh, our show today was basically celebrating and looking back at the past where we are coming from, being able to look back at some of the artists that have gone past and particularly the role of women in the liberation of the African people. Uh, music and art as a form of expression. Here in South Africa, we've seen some uh, beautiful, beautiful narratives like Gogo Mashangu, who designed a BMW interior and uh, has made accolades in the world for one of the best artists that are there. But I think I have a problem in particular with Africans. We seem not to celebrate our own art form. We seem not to celebrate our own excellence. We will always want to, something to come from Paris, something to come from London or Milan, something to have come out from Washington and, and New York. And in the midst of all this, we, we, we seem to fail to, to harvest the genius of our own people and convert these things, not only for commercial purposes, but for the healing of the nation itself. And um, I, I want just maybe to mention something about a kuduhon, something about a kuduhon, which is very critical in, in terms of African spirituality. Now, this is an instrument of, uh, which is actually a literal, it's a horn, it's a horn of a kudu, it's a horn of an animal in the bush. But when you take this horn and then you blow into it, then you produce the music and the sound that is that is in you, that is transmitted into the horn itself. So follow me very carefully. The horn is dead by itself. But when you blow into it, you blow life into it. 
And this becomes a great resurrection because the sound that comes out here begins to become the voice that resurrects the entire continent and beyond. Therefore, if you understand how the Kudu horn works, inside all of us also is the breath of life. Inside all of us is the spirit of life. Inside all of us is the voice coming from the ancient times, the ancient traditions, the ancient experiences, the ancient songs and celebrations, which go through us as a Kudu horn. And through our voices, we can actually make the spirit that is in us to be audible to those that are outside and those that are around us. Therefore, music and art stops just being us carrying pieces of things, but become an extension of the voices, an extension of the voices of the past, an extension of the sounds, the celebrations that are coming to us from the past. Therefore, our art form is not only a contemporary art form, but art form becomes a conduit, a conversation, a communication of the ancient storylines as they are moving and being carried forward into the future. This therefore makes it very critical that every musician, every artist must not actually consider themselves just as mere artists. You are conduits. You are conduits. You are communicators of information from the spiritual world into the physical world. Musicians who just play around in the music world, don't play around with music and art. It will kill you because music and art are spiritual. You need to consider for yourself what quality of communication are you passing out there? What quality of information are you sending out there? What quality of spirit are you sending out there? Consider yourself therefore as a conduit. If you can understand this concept, it's actually very fundamental towards the building of the greater African continent in terms of Ubuntu. You are not just talking. You are communicating. You are not just living. You are communicating. You are not just doing. You are communicating. The question is, what quality of voice, what quality of information has been hedged in the past, which is coming through you as a form of a song? Therefore, when you talk about isangoma, ingoma, and the kids right now will be doing a song on the drum and on the voice. Ingoma in Africa, ngoma means a drum. Sangoma, the one who owns a drum. Sangoma, the one who heals with a drum. Sangoma, the one who heals with a song. Sangoma, the one who sings to bring healing to the other. Therefore, before you can talk about herbs and cutting each other and drinking the blood of chickens, you need to understand that the African healing processes is not found in the laboratories, is not found in medicines and roots. The African healing is found in song. E sangoma, as I usually say it, when zan engomeni maunge sona isangoma. What are you doing with a song if you cannot heal someone with a song? I want us to take some few moments and hear some sounds of healing from my children as they heal our song, our souls with the song. Let there be dancing between our ears as we are transported to the land of the spirit. And this, for me, that's where I live. The world of music and sound on Sankofa, your program, your host, Maponga J. I'll be with you just after this performance and as we celebrate my children. Let us hear them in song.
challenge your ordinary experience the extraordinary not only the government the municipality here has had no plan now i believe that my peace is my most valuable asset absolutely beautiful this is exactly what i was looking for camping 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 dj Kelly. it is a day to celebrate we're ready for action i like it when it's nice and soft yeah, that is yeah. nice how was it like growing up in nigeria yes sir yes sir you know what it is feeling is there that you know you're doing something special stop being so dramatic mira you should just be what you want to be experience the extraordinary with star set the coronavirus outbreak experience the extraordinary tremendous waste and tremendous fraud mexico is in fact you will soon find out it is a day to celebrate we don't approve at all what's going on well i don't know if it's necessarily unusual challenge your ordinary not only the government the municipality here has had no plan experience the extraordinary with star set to pray studying about that good old way and to show where a robe and crown dear lord show me the way oh sisters let's go down let's go down come on down oh sisters let's go down down in the river to pray As I went down in the river to pray, studied about that good old way and to show where a robe and crown, dear Lord, show me the way. Oh, sisters, let's go down, let's go down, come on down. Oh, sisters, let's go down. down in the river to pray everything to god in prayer what a friend we have in jesus oh our sins and griefs to bear what Let's go down come on down oh sisters let's go down down in the river to pray Peace. 
something special. Have you lost it? Move! Stop being so dramatic, Meera. Challenge your ordinary. Why don't you start a dance class? Hmm? Experience the extraordinary with Star Set. Challenge your ordinary. Experience the extraordinary. 
Not only the government, the municipality here has had no plan. Now, I believe that my peace is my most valuable asset. Absolutely beautiful! This is exactly what I was looking for! Camping, camping, camping! DJ Khaled! It is a day to celebrate. We're ready for action. I like it when it's nice and soft. Yeah, that is yeah. nice. How was it like growing up in Nigeria? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You know what it is. Feeling is there that, you know, you're doing something special. Stop being so dramatic, Mira. You should just be what you want to be. Experience the extraordinary with Starset. From rural to urban, we bring you local and international sport. From Cape to Cairo, from Nairobi to Kinshasa. <laughs> We stand out amongst the rest. And we are here to inspire you. From the Horn of Africa to the Equator's indigenous people. Channel 500 on Starset. This is Galaxy Universal Network. The coronavirus outbreak. Experience the extraordinary. Tremendous waste and tremendous fraud. Mexico is, in fact, you will soon find out. It is a day to celebrate. We don't approve at all what's going on. Well, I don't know if it's necessarily unusual. Challenge your ordinary. Not only the government, the municipality here has had no plan. Experience the extraordinary with Starset. Welcome back. My name is Maponga J. Fuzijena Chigaramboko, and we've been happy to be having you today discussing the greater spaces of uh, Sankofa, looking into our past, looking for solutions for the future. There's no better time than now that Africa must begin a serious conversation to integrate itself. The West is bringing the Western technologies. The North is bringing its own governance systems. The East are bringing their own Hong Kongs and other things. The question is, what is Africa contributing? We hear many people talking about the global village. And the global village is going to be a reality. But when we get into that global village, the question is, what will Africa be in that global village? And if we don't plan our things well, put our resources together, have a strategic thinking pattern happening in place, we may discover that we're going to be slaves again in the next civilization as Africans. We have enough resources on the ground, cultural resources, academic resources, human resources. And all these resources cannot constantly be exploited by the West including the harvesting of our own ideas and brains and being utilized in the West and giving us no profit at all. It's important that Africans, we need to start learning, we need to start learning this simple, small word, harvest indigenous knowledge. In my own village, we call it harvest the rain. When it rains, gather the rain, reserve it, you can use it on another day. How do we as a continent begin to get involved constantly harvesting indigenous medicines, harvesting indigenous knowledge systems, harvesting indigenous governance systems, harvesting indigenous education systems, harvesting our own and packaging all these things into a profitable industry so that we can be able to carry forward with us also to the West with us also contributing meaningfully towards the GDP of the greater continent. I'm so excited to become part of this revolution, become part of this change. We've started up organizations such as Farmers of Thought and AIM, where we are constantly educating each other as Africans and writing the new narrative, saying our own stories. We are tired of saying their story is history. No, we're not going to be telling his story as part of our story. We need Africans to start telling our own stories, our own narratives, 
to our own children. On your program, Sangofa, your host, Maponga J. Fuzijena, mwana omchena, chigara mboku, gara mashamba huda, chira, na wana wanji. Makumbe mwana mwisende we shano, wana chigara mabu, kema tanda anowora. Chikuwe chite, zaachi no kwikba, na wana manga, wale pedo, wana tamba nacho. Tizu wana wida miti ya sose, until we see you again. Enjoy your day, don't do what I wouldn't do. If you do it, do it better. Challenge your ordinary. Experience the extraordinary. Not only the government, the municipality here uh, has had no plan. Now, I believe that my peace is my most valuable asset. Absolutely beautiful! Ah! This is exactly what I was looking for. Camping, camping, camping! DJ Khaled! It is a day to celebrate. We're ready for action. I like it when it's nice and soft. Yeah, that is yeah. nice. How was it like growing up in Nigeria? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You know what it is. Feeling is there that, you know, you're doing something special. Stop being so dramatic, Mira. You should just be what you want to be. Experience the extraordinary with Starset.